Welcome to the NFP preview for August 2022. This month's NFP has the potential to bring back the type of market volatility that used to characterize the NFP of past years. What could contribute to this increased volatility? We will look at some data points, but first, let's take a look at how things have changed in the past weeks. First contributing factor to increased uncertainty and volatility. The Fed felt it necessary to backtrack on statements made on rates causing confusion among market participants who for years uh, were, have been used to genteel Fed forward guidance. Forward guidance is the term used by policymaker, uh, policymakers to signal policy way in advance. And uh, recently they announced to the world that from now on, their policy decision would be based, would be data dependent. What does that mean? Well, that means they would reach policy decision meeting by meeting after viewing the latest data. So the Fed is basically day trading. Some critics have noted that in the private sector, this type of approach would be defined by academics as winging it and just making it up as we go. Market participants will now have to interpret the same data that the Fed sees and uh, they will need to try to predict or speculate on what policies could be implemented next by the Fed. Uh, this article by Reuters has two quotes that illustrate the case. The entire fixed income complex heaved and was forced to reprice an entirely new and elevated Fed trajectory from this week out to a peak of some 4% peak rates by March of next year. Stock markets nosedive worldwide and the dollar surge. And here another one. The implication for investors is that central bank are now less predictable and possibly long into the future, implying uncertainty and volatility. Here comes the volatility and will require a higher risk premium to compensate, higher cost of hedging. Now, this was, uh, of course, we saw this in the yields and uh, this was reported in, uh, in, past, in the past few weeks, uh, reports to our clients. Um, so yeah, market expecting risk and uh, yield curve inver inversion. So let's look at the data uh, to get a sense for what the NFP report tomorrow could bring. Let's start with unemployment claims. This is a, this tracks the number of individuals filing for unemployment insurance for the first time. Uh, so you're recently unemployed, you apply for the insurance, unemployment insurance for the first time. This number has been increasing during the past months. That's a bullish trend right there. Also, the actual numbers continue to come out higher than expected. As you can see, uh, the expectation marked by the brown bar at 253 and the actual, uh, the blue ba bar went up to 256,000. Now, this is a lagging indicator. Typically, the number of unemployed people is an important signal of overall economic health because consumer spending is highly correlated with labor market conditions. One of the Fed's mandate is to create conditions that lead to low unemployment. So while this data set is a major consideration for monetary policy wizards, the Fed has mentioned in past months that lower jobs could offset inflationary pressures. So higher unemployment is a fix for higher inflation. In other words, if enough people lose their jobs, inflation will be under control and the Fed will be able to slow down the rate hikes. Like many things recently, things may look a little upside down. Bad is the new good. Make sense? So this chart shows increasing numbers of people drawing unemployment insurance. Assuming the trend stays within the boundaries of past growth trajectory, uh, this should not trigger drastic policy changes from the Fed. From, from the Fed. 
Now let's take a look at JOLT's job opening. The JOLT stands, JOLT's acronym stands for Job Openings and Labor Turnover, Turnover Survey. The survey is closely monitored by the Fed. It's one of their favorites, as job openings are a leading indicator of overall employment. Note that the actual number at 10.7 million was lower than the 10.99 or 11 million expected. So this is now the second indicator that shows a negative development. Not good for the economy, but good to fight inflation. Next, we have the Employment Cost Index, which is the Fed's preferred wage gauge, which surprised higher at 1.3% versus the expected 1.1%. This directly adds inflationary pressure, and this is a positive income growth as this is positive income growth for workers. If this trend continues, it suggests more rate hikes. Uh, next, we have the ISM manufacturing PMI, above uh, also something that uh, the Fed monitors. Above 50, it's industry expansion. Below 50, it's a contraction. Again, this is a leading indicator of economic health because businesses react quickly to market conditions, and this indicator tracks business opinions of market conditions. Uh, businesses are acutely aware of the current state of many sectors of the economy. This survey co covers the relative level of business conditions, including employment, production, uh, what have you, new orders, prices, supply, supplier deliveries, and inventories. While the survey came out at 52.8, um, up from 52.3, uh, expected we look at lower highs being printed since the highs of 2021. This does not look like a bullish trend the way the media is painting it out to be. Um, let's look at the employment component. Notice the bright, big, bold headline is positive, but look at the employment. Employment is contracting. So this is not positive for workers. So we gather that employment is not healthy. Let's look at the services PMI. It's a similar story. Uh, the trend is not exactly bullish. The headline is bullish, but look at employment. Similar situation. So, unfortunately, the reporting cycle seems to be only beginning to pick up potential changes we are observing in recent days. Um, while initial jobless claims are climbing, as we have seen earlier, the continuing jobless, jobless claim, people that are already claiming unemployment and con continue to do so, is climbing higher and is now at over 1.4 million people. Based on latest data, currently the US is losing more jobs than it creates. It created 152,000 jobs, it lost 249,250. That's a negative 97,000 jobs. This is concerning because household surveys are telling a different story from the establishment surveys. So there is a 1.5 million job differential between the, two between the two surveys. Clearly, it's not an ideal employment situation and further a further scan observation of companies' news in the past few days brought more concerning data. Uh, this is a list of companies announcing layoffs. This is just after the GDP report showed a contraction in the economy for the second quarter. So look at the number, 600 workers. Number two, Rivian, uh, 840 workers. 7-Eleven, 880 corporate jobs. Shopify, 1,000 people. Vimeo says 6%, Vimeo, what do you call it, Vimeo? 6% of its current workforce will lose their job. Redfin, 8%, Compass, 10%, Remax, 17%, Robinhood, 23%, Ford, 8,000 jobs. Now, small numbers in, uh, in the overall US picture because uh, it's a huge country, uh, but it, it points a picture. And again, we just had uh, a GDP report showing a contraction for the second quarter. 
of course, uh, policymakers don't want to show bad news. Uh, they, do not, they do not want to label a recession ahead of uh, the uh, voting that will happen in a few months. So there is no recession. Now, please notice as traders, we have the luxury of being able to focus on actual charts and data without taking sides, political sides, uh, but understanding what is happening in the background. So we just take note of the data and attempt to understand the likely moves that will result in the market. Also, as traders in this environment, we can appreciate how important it is for traders to focus on building up our skills. Trading can potentially earn income that grows with time. And uh, in these times, this is uh, really heaven sent. So what can we expect tomorrow from the NFP? In tomorrow's NFP, we will have three data sets being reported at the same time. All three can impact market response. We will have the average hourly earnings, which is expected to show an increase of 0.3%. Uh, the non-farm employment change, expected at 250,000. This will be down 122,000 jobs from last month figure of 372. So that's what, a 30% drop, not good. And then we have the unemployment rate, which is ex unemployment rate, sorry, which is expected at 3.6%, which is beautifully low. So if tomorrow NFP's actual data significantly diverges from the forecast, and since the central banks no longer provide guidance, this could bring about very different responses from market participants in anticipation, speculation of central bank policy changes at the next meetings. Therefore, this is expected to bring the kind of volatility we used to see in past years. Now, what do we expect in the charts? A strong job and wages report would add to the inflationary pressures and force the Fed to consider hiking rates. And that would be bullish dollar and bearish equities. Let's look at the graphs to bring some actual scenario into the picture. Uh, but first, uh, this little diagram shows the, ex the consensus expectation uh, of what would bring about a bearish uh, dollar index, a slightly bearish dollar index, or bullish dollar index. So if the wages are below expectation and the jobs are below expectation, that the worst, that's the worst scenario, it will be a bearish dollar index, but bullish equities. On the other, on the opposite uh, end of the spectrum, we would have both uh, data set uh, above expectation. So wages above expectation, jobs above expectation, bringing uh, very positive news for the dollar index and forcing the Fed to take aggressive action in uh, hiking rates. Now, we would like to see the dollar index drop below the most recent swing low at 105.050 and potentially reach down to the 104.50s. Anywhere between these two levels, uh, we would be looking for a long setup. Um, it must be a clean setup. Um, this move would be matched by a choppy and dropping indices, markets, equities. So for this, we recommend you stay tuned to our Telegram channel for real-time updates on potential market moves. All for now, good luck and good trading.